Hi everybody, I'm really excited for today's video because many of you have been asking about it. I'm going to explain and show you everything that I do to prepare for a new seasonal garden. I have been working behind the scenes preparing my future garden which is going to be in the other side of our property. It's going to be a much bigger project than the one that I currently have. It's going to become a huge food forest. Since I'm starting this new garden from scratch, I thought this was going to be a great opportunity to show you how I plan all the work in advance. So this is going to be a free masterclass on how I plan and organize everything using my Notion. So I would like to say thank you to Notion for sponsoring today's video. It is free for you all with the link that I will leave in the description below. So let's jump in my computer and show you how I use it. The first page that I have here is my homepage where I have uh, the four more important links that I use daily. The first one is the garden plan. The second one is my garden guide. I always have it here just in case I want to jump back on it and take a look. The third one I have a garden wish list, which is important because I might need many things but I cannot buy or cannot afford to buy all of them at the same time so this is a good um, list to have here and then the fourth is my journals I have a garden journal and a daily one and also the notes first one that I'm going to show you is going to be the garden plan clicking here or here on the left once that I access to my garden plan I divided everything in three months because um, when you actually prepare for a garden, you need three months in advance of preparation. The first month is the month where you design your garden, gather all the material that you will need to start growing your seedlings, or if you want to grow potatoes to get the bulbs. All of that is done in the first month. The second month is the month of the doing is where you start your seedlings, is where you prepare your soil and the third month is the month where you actually plant everything in the soil. So in the first month I have three lists, one is a task list and the second one is a material list and the third one is my plants and seeds. In my task list I have everything that I consider is important uh, when you start your garden. In my case, this is going to be a new garden that I'm starting from scratch, so I need to do everything. Important things, you have to measure, you have to draw, design your garden bed, the path that is going to take you through the garden, and leisure space, of course, very important because you want to spend time in your garden, uh, analyzing how it's going, things that you will do differently next season, so for that you will need a comfortable space where you would like to actually spend time on it. How I organize my task list is in three columns. I have the to do, the doing and the done. You can name them differently and design them as you would like. Usually I move the things that I will be doing that day in the doing column. Today, for example, I will do the design of the garden beds and the leisure space. And once that I complete the task, I move it to the done column. And then you can add images, extra information that you believe it is important from the task list in the first month. In the second page, I have the material order. I made a table with the things that I consider are more important in this stage. The material that I will need in this new garden is really simple. I will need seedling trays, compost, mulch and seeds or bulbs. For example, seedling trays. Here I have if I have it in stock or not. So if I have it in stock, then I just write it to make sure that I order everything on time before actually starting my seedlings and the garden. Then here I write how many I have in stock and how many I need. And then in this fourth column, I make a formula, pretty simple. How many I need, how many I have and how many I need to order. In this case will be seven. 
And then the final one is the status. Once that everything is ready, then I know I can move forward from the zip row. If I open here, I have uh, linked all my plants and seeds that I would like to order into my third page of the first month organization. I'm going to start next month with potatoes and onion. You can customize this page. I chose to put here a picture of the seeds that I have. You can design the page and move the picture. You can change the cover. You can use one of their pictures or upload your own picture so you feel more inspired. I divide it in different columns. I start with the family, for example, potatoes. I write the variety of potatoes that I would like to grow. In this case, one of them is going to be a purple filetote. And then I think it's important to start at this point actually knowing where you are going to have it in the garden. Uh, so I have all of this in my third column, which is going to be garden bed. For example, I know that the potato purple villetote is going to be in the garden bed A1, and I would like to plant 100 of them. Then I have um, this other column in where I write if I need to order it or if I already have it. This one I already have it, um, thanks to all my Patreons. Uh, they made possible that this is so I'm going to be self-sufficient 100% in potatoes and onions. So thank you all. Since I have all of them in stock, I don't need to order anything. I click this last column, which is ready. So now I have all my potatoes and onions ready to transplant into my garden. In this order list, I don't add everything that I want to grow all at once because it will become overwhelming. So in this first month, it was about potatoes, onions, and a couple of trees that I still haven't gotten yet, but I would like to. And once that I have everything ready, I move into the second month which is actually the month of starting the works, getting your hands dirty and starting the garden. I divide it in two columns, which are the two most important things that you will need to do in the second month, is to prepare your beds and start your seedlings. If you are like me, one person, you cannot do all of this at the same time, so you will have to be organized and know which beds you are going to transplant first. In my case, the beds are going to be A1, A2, A3. They are all checked. And then the plants that are going to be in those beds are going to be potatoes, onions. So once that I have my seedlings all prepared, I check them here and I forget about it. I don't have to do anything else. I will recommend to continue doing your seedlings because it's going to take longer. And once that your seedlings are all in your seeds tray, you can start preparing the beds one by one. And once that you complete the next one, it's going to be bed B2. Once that it's complete, you check it and then you move to the next one. And hopefully in the second month, all of this is finished and we will move into the third month. The third month is the planting record. In my case, I didn't feel it because we are not still in the third month, but I more or less left everything all prepared for that time. For example, we will start with the garden bed A1, no? So I added here, and then we write the variety that we are going to have there. In this case, will be Villetote potato. If I plant it, I check here, already planted, and then I write which day. Why? Because in the case of potatoes, I know more or less uh, how many days until harvest days. And this potato is going to be 120 days and 150. We'll write it here in this column, harvest day, and a start and ending date. In case of potatoes, for example, we have two dates. And the first day is when we can harvest the potato fresh to eat it right away. The second date is 150 days, for example, is when we harvest the potato to actually storage for the rest of the year. I read here I will be able to harvest them in between July and August. All this information is safe here, so I don't have to remember the harvesting date of everything because it's going to be impossible. In this other column, 
I right if I want to actually replant it this season or not. In case of potatoes and onions, no, but for example, during summer, if you want to have leafy greens, if you live in an area like me that it's really hot, they quick go to bolt, or if we plant lettuces on June, we will have to keep replanting them every, I will say, every two, three weeks. If we want to have daily harvest, I choose yes. I would like to continue replanting lettuces. I will write here the replant date goal. We'll write here if we need seedlings or not. You can plant corn directly in the ground. In the case of lettuces, I will do seedlings. So I will say for lettuces, yes. For corn, no, I will put it directly into the soil. Lastly, when do I need to start seedlings? Because if I need to start the seedling, it's going to be at least two weeks before putting them in the soil. This is pretty much the work that we will be doing during the first three months. If I go again to my homepage, I have different resources in my Notion. In one is where I write the things that I will need to do during all this time, in the, in the next three months. Uh, but I also have here all the links, all the information of plants that I might be using this year or in the future. So it's all there. I don't have to do the research every time that I want to look for type of orange trees, for example. So all of this I have it here in my garden guide all the plant data and information that I have gathered all in one place. I divided it in three categories. I have trees, flowers and food. In the trees I wrote the kind of fruit trees that I would like to have in my food forest by family, variety, harvest mode, shelf life, which is really important for me because some lemons have longer shelf life than others and not all of them produce at the same time so if for example we would like to have lemons all year long depending on the type of variety I have four seasons Eureka, Fino 49, Verna each of them the harvest month is different this way if I plant three or four lemon trees I make sure that I am able to harvest lemons all year long. In another column I have the price and the quantities that I think or I would like to have in the future and then the total cost uh, which is a simple formula but it's good to have on track because you might not be able to buy all of them at the same time so if you know how many you would like to start with you can keep track of expenses for example and something that has been a game changer for me is being able to save all the links and information of each tree, plant or flower. Reason being is because before I used to have a screenshots in one side, um, the link saved in a note, in the downloaded folder and by the time that I wanted to actually buy a plant or a tree, I had to do the job all over again. This way I gather all my information in one place and when I have the budget and I'm ready, I just come here and then check the types, uh, the ones that I would like to buy this month. In this link it takes me to the web page where I could buy the tree and I know with the picture that they show you what to expect of each tree so it's not a surprise when the order arrives. And yes, that's pretty much what we I have here. I have a lot of things um, safe. I have lemon trees, orange, yuzu, um, avocado, mango and papaya because I would like to have a more tropical garden here. Now if I go to flowers, for example, I have calendula, cosmos, dahlias and poppy. You can customize it and then I have the calendulas with the green tag, the cosmos with the grey dahlias in a different one. The reason being is because it's easier, it's more visual to identify things, so it's more organized because you know that dahlias are one color and you have all of them safe there. I organize this page the same way that the other, planting time, harvest time and here I have um, something different which is from 
where I'm planting from, seeds or bulb. In case of dahlias, it's bulb. In case of uh, calendulas, it's going to be seeds. And then the planting method. Uh, some flowers, you can just uh, throw the seeds in the soil and it's direct sowing. And some of them you will have to make um, seedlings, so it's indoor seedling. Then properties. I like to have a garden that has a many type of plants, a edible, medicinal, a cut flowers, flowers to dry. For me it's important to have all these things safe depending on each plant. This way when you design and actually make your garden, you know if this calendula you could eat the flower, and the leaves or not, if it has medicinal properties or not, and then inside the variety I have here a page in where you can write which property has each plant, which I find that it's really helpful to have all in one place. The price that each package of seeds cost, depending on the quantity that the brand says I calculate how much I need, so I write I just need one package and I'm going to spend a total of 3 euros for this type of calendula. The link, which is important. The image of the flower, it's easy to access. Once I download it, it's all here. I am. I'm going to show you something now that I think you are going to love it plants by family for example and then planting time I think this is really organized because then we are okay we are now uh, in February these are the seeds that I could start planting now uh, when we are in March these are going to be all the plants that we can start either by seed or by bulb and you don't have to be thinking and going back and take a look it makes the job much easier you can also organize it by planting method if you prefer. Also have like a broader view, timeline like this one that I have here, which is for the entire year. You know which flower you can have certain months. Last, we go to the food page, which I have organized by type of food, um, leek, spinach, tomatoes, peppers, squash, eggplant, etc. I write the variety, for example, I have different varieties of leeks and then depending on the variety, I know which one I can grow during the summer, which one I can grow during the winter and then I write the seedling time uh, to make sure that I have leeks all year long. Planting time and harvest time, planting from seed or bulb planting method, indoor seedling, direct sowing, you may have both. Squashes, you can start from seedlings or you can plant them directly in the soil if you plant them later on in the season. You can take a look looking at family organization, planting time, planting method or timeline. I really like the timeline because it gives you a broader view and I know that the squash I have this period of time to plant into the soil so if you are not able to start in February you know that you still have uh, March and April to do your seedlings so you still have time to do your garden and don't get overwhelmed with doing it all at once. Also all pages can be shared with guests and members in your workspace so you can collaborate in real time uh, in case that you have someone helping you. And that's pretty much the garden guide page. I decorated with this picture of my summer garden from last year, this picture of Dahlia's. It has limitless customization. I like to keep my Notion workspace pretty. You can change the cover really easy. You can upload your own pictures or they have in stock. Here you can choose the emoji that you feel that is going to inspire you more uh, depending on the page, we can give more personality to each page, uh, changing the font, uh, we have seri for mono and then we can select the text size if we want full width or not. You can pretty much uh, customize 
every page which I think it's amazing because you give your touch of design and personality to it and it will actually make you want to spend time designing your garden and taking a look at it and everything. So from the garden guide then I move to the garden wish list. I have here flowers that I would like to buy, food seeds, trees, books and tools and equipment. It are my five categories. You might need to have new tools but you don't buy them all at once. I have here already saved a garden rake which I don't have, uh, mine broke last year and I have the picture of the one that I want, the link to it and I can mark if I order it or not and I would like to keep the information just in case I would like to share it in the future or something like that or you can just select it and delete it from your wishlist because you already got it Another section that I have here is about books that I would like to order and read. The first one that I have here is my Farm to Table Garden Guide, which I already have. So it's already ordered and read. If you don't have it, you can put it here and then once that you feel ready to get it. Another book that I have saved here in my reading list is the Discovering Dahlias, one of you recommended, uh, so thank you Patricia. I haven't ordered it yet, so I have it here in my wish list. I have a column of trees, flowers and food seeds. In the seeds that I would like to have but I haven't gotten yet are, for example, two varieties of tomatoes that I would like to order later on in the season. I don't necessarily need right now, but I would like to eventually get. One is called Anna Russian and it's a variety that is more adapted to colder climates. And I found it really interesting because even though I live in a warm climate, I would like to eventually be able to grow um, tomatoes in this space. I wasn't able to do this this winter because the seeds that I have are for a warmer climate but I think if I use a seed variety that comes from Northern Europe that it's adapted to a colder climate I will be able to extend the harvest period of tomatoes keeping the plant here in, in the greenhouse. In the trees column I have a few varieties of dwarf trees I'm still thinking if to get it or not, um, the reason being is because I would like in the food forest to have trees but I don't necessarily want them to be huge trees uh, so they don't cover soil area giving too much shade during the winter. For example a fig tree that I have here that is a dwarf fig tree. I know that uh, the maximum height is going to be 2-3 meters, otherwise a normal variety could be up to 20 meters. So all these thoughts and varieties that I'm thinking if to get or not because it's more like uh, I would love to but it's not 100% necessary, I have it in this page. And then we will move to my garden journal really important. Why? Because we want to learn from our garden and I feel that in order to improve our gardening techniques and grow along our garden uh, we have to take notes, make observations. Uh, for example, with loofahs in my case, uh, the first time that I planted them I transplanted them in the soil in an area that was uh, in a shaded area. It was really close to the olive tree and I think uh, the plant didn't get enough sun exposure. And next year, knowing all of these nodes that I made, uh, I decided to plant them in a different position. I transplanted them earlier and I grew a lot of loofahs. This year we have our own sponges. I have uh, garden observations, garden notes, weekly happenings, uh, new crops. Uh, so if there is a new crop that I would like to have more information or to get more informed, then I will write it here. Garden goals for 2023. 
I believe it's important to have goals. Uh, doesn't matter if they are smaller or bigger. Maybe your goal this year is to start your own garden and grow just herbs because it's easier because you don't have a big space. It's fine, then you have your own intentions, happenings and actions that you are going to take. You can start little by little or your intention this year, like mine will be to become self-sufficient in terms of potatoes, um, tomatoes and onions, for example. So I will have here all my intentions, the steps that I'm going to take towards that goal and which action I'm going to take. Here I have all my daily journal with all my archive journals already saved in each month and notes. I have random notes and then I have some personal things like knitting and sewing notes, recipes and beauty. In recipes are the recipes that I consider are important in order to make our garden more efficient in terms of uh, harvesting. I have uploaded here a few pages that I already had in my computer. More information and that I will be using in the future. For example, in this Word document, I had different places that I could buy seeds. And instead of making a new page, I just uploaded to my Notion and it's already saved here. So I can go back to this document. So I don't have to uh, look in my computer or in Google Drive. I also uploaded here my garden guide, which is a digital book. It's digital for two reasons. One is because I would like to keep it updated and if I print it, I cannot do that anymore. And second is because I think it's important to always have it on hand to go back to either here in my Notion or have it in my phone or in, I feel like it, I just print it. And last, I would like to make a new garden mood board, which I wanted to do with you because the garden doesn't have anything and I feel it's important in order to keep us motivated to do the job, to find inspiration. So I'm going to add here the new page. We'll put here this emoji. And then this is our empty page. I'm going to start making it pretty by adding a cover. Change cover. In the Unsplash, they have a variety of pictures. So let's say we look for garden. I reposition the picture and it looks really nice. I have different ideas of things that I would like to have in this new garden. The other day I saw a few mini cabins that I thought it would be really nice to have there because the garden is completely exposed to the sun and summer gets really really hot here so uh, I feel it's important to have some shaded area who knows, maybe I don't have time to make it this year this is the inspiration that I have found I already have my pictures saved here in my computer so I will upload it and the really important sitting area and working area uh, for me, it's important to have a sitting area that has some shape. We put here the emojis of a chair and a table. Really some food protection because Lolita will probably be there and she's the thing that uh, scares me the most in my garden because if I plant my seedlings, then she will go and undig them. So I need to be prepared this year and I found a few inspiration online of things that I could make. I also found protection for cabbages, uh, which if some of you know, I would like to know where to get these metal pieces because if I want to grow cabbage on summer, I think I will probably have some pests, uh, the cabbage moth. If I use protection and some Cover. This is going to help with the pest control. And then lastly, here is a, a picture of a trellis that I think it's pretty easy to do it yourself and to keep uh, tomatoes or climbing plants like the 
melon and squashes to have a more compacted garden and grow things vertically. You can also start planning your new year or your new garden with Notion for free using the link in my description box. And if you have any question that about what I talked today about the garden, Notion, lifestyle or any other question, I'm planning on doing a Q&A. Uh, so I will make sure to answer as many questions as possible for a video that is going to launch really soon.